And let's say I wanted to lighten the image up overall. Grab that middle bead, lighten the image up. And then let's say the client calls back and says, it's great, but maybe it's a little bit too bright. Can you darken it down a little bit? You say, oh, no problem. Let me just uh, grab the new middle bead. Oh, wait a minute. Look at what happened to this histogram. Remember I said, you know, you grab the middle bead and you pull it one side. And then, uh-oh, some of the beads pop off the string. You know, there's no room for them, so you bead shatters and it pops off the string. Or in the case of the image, one of those shades of gray disappears. You know, then the pixels are like, hey, my shade of gray just disappeared. Well, I guess there's one beside that'll be close enough. So all the pixels that were represented by this shade of gray move over to that shade of gray, and suddenly you have twice as many pixels being represented by that shade of gray. And you get this little spike happening here. So a bead popped off the string. All the pixels that were represented by the one that disappeared said, ah, we'll take this one. And you get these spikes. And on the other side, you get those gaps opening up. And then you think, OK, well, I'll just uh, pull it the other way, and that'll fix the problem. But if you look at the histogram now, it's actually gotten worse. Now you got spikes, you got gaps, and if you really overdid it, like let's say you said, I want to make this look like a middle of the day. I'm going to make this really, really bright. Look at that. The sun is shining down. You can feel the sweat pouring off your forehead. And then the client's like, yeah, it's a little too bright. Can you darken it back down? You're like, no problem. Let me just uh, pull this down a bit. And suddenly, you start noticing the transition points. Instead of a nice smooth gradient, things are looking a little bit too smooth. Body. Suddenly you've got so few shades of gray in the image that you're seeing the transition between the points. And geez, it's not showing up that well on the projector there. But anyway, you get the idea. Let me, let me make this even more extreme. There we go. You can see that banding in there. Now, we really had to push this quite to the extreme to get this effect noticeable. Because if you look at the original image, there's really very few shades of gray in there to begin with. But it is destructive. So let's say you're doing some dodging and burning. Well, burning, where it darkens it down, is kind of the same thing as grabbing that middle bead and pulling it to one side. And a few years back, I was doing some printing for a photographer, and she'd, she'd shot raw, she'd processed it out to an 8-bit TIFF, and she'd used a, you know, dodging and burning tools right on it. And it was um, kind of a Victorian kind of house, some models coming down the stairs, and she kind of darkened around the outside to kind of make it kind of a little spookier, and then kind of lightened up where the models were, and then kind of darkened around down their faces, and lightened up around the eyes. And there's so many pulling that bead back and forth that the images were almost unprintable in areas. We did some blurring, we kind of got it to work okay. But if she'd used a non-destructive technique, which is what we're going to take a look at right now, everything would have been just fine. So once you've got the file downloaded, open up that folder, dodge and burn, and inside you'll see an image called soft light D and B. D and B standing for dodging and burning. And what is dodging and burning? I mean, you know where the terms come from? So the idea is that when light hits the photo paper, it gets dark. And the more light that hits it, the darker it gets. So let's say this is the enlarger, the projector up here. And normally it's you know, projecting the image down onto the paper. And let's say I wanted this area here to get a little bit darker. Well, if I let more light hit it, so let's say I was able to you know, block the, all the light with my hand and let just a little shadow, uh, OK, pretend I could actually do that, shine down uh, onto that area that area would darken down. And then maybe I wanted to lighten up, say, this area around in here in the center part. If I took a little circle of cardboard, a little disc of cardboard, and I taped it to a thin piece of wire so I could hold it without casting a shadow, I could block or dodge the light from that area. Less light would make it lighter. That's where the term comes from. And you might notice the actual dodge and burn tools look like there's that little disc of cardboard taped to a thin piece of wire. And the burn tool, there's that hand letting the light shine down onto whatever you're trying to darken down. Now, these tools, as we just said, are destructive. It's like grabbing that middle bead and pulling it one side or the other. You're going to be losing some of the shades of gray. But what if you could make it look like it's darker in an area without actually changing the pixels. Like if you put a pair of sunglasses on, it doesn't actually get darker outside. Like you don't put sunglasses on and people around you go, what happened, right? It looks like it, but it didn't. Let's take a look at something here. If I were to make a new transparent layer, and just follow along on the screen for now, if I made a new transparent layer, and let's say, let's say I wanted to darken down some of this image, and what part of the image might I want to darken down, actually? Let's talk a little bit about why you might want to do dodging and burning. 
Let's say you're doing a gallery show. There's like you and 10 other photographers and you've all got pictures hung up on the walls around the gallery. Um, do you want people to look at your photos and like your photos and buy your photos so that you get the money? Or do you want them to look at and like and buy other people's photos so they get the money? What do you think? Everyone gets the money. No, 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 it's not. It's not bad for all of us. No, there isn't. <laughs> Everyone's gonna buy one thing. You want, you want to buy your stuff, right? Because money, that's what art is about. So if you look at this, well, what do, you, where do you, what do you notice first? Where do your eyes tend to go? What do you look at first? Where do your eyes get drunk? The lights, maybe the pigeons in this reflection here, uh, maybe that bright sky up there. We tend to get drawn to the brighter parts of an image. You're not really looking at the center so much, but maybe this isn't the story that you wanted to tell. Maybe the story you were thinking of was, hey, what's down at the end of the street there? You want people to want to take a walk down the street. Maybe there's a little bistro or something, explore a little bit more. If you could redirect your viewer's attention or kind of guide them around the image, like, you know, somebody might look at this and go, oh, some pigeons and a patch of light here, and oh, there's a light up there, and oh, look at that beautiful photograph over there. You got like an exit point over here. What if I darkened that down a little bit? And what if I did it non-destructively? Let's say I wanted to darken this down. So I took a paintbrush, and with some black paint, I went, blah, it's darker. And maybe I wanted to do some vignetting, so I did some darkening around the outside there. And then maybe I want people to kind of take a look, a little walk down the street there, so I put some white in there. So that's kind of like dodging and burning, but like to the extreme. Um, anybody know what blending modes are? You ever heard that term before? Let me just quickly show you something here. Obviously that was not a very good job of dodging and burning. But let's take a look at this image where I have three little squares, well technically rectangles, but three little shapes here. Black, white, and 50% gray. And right now they're in normal blending mode. And in normal blending mode you see them for exactly what they are. The white looks white, the black looks black, and the 50% gray looks 50% gray. These are all different blending modes. And Adobe has kind of divided them up into little groupings for you, so you can kind of roughly figure out what's going to do what. So any of the blending modes in here, you'll always end up with some kind of a darker version of the image. Anything down here, you're always going to end up with some kind of lighter version of the image. These ones will always mess around with the contrast in some kind of way. These ones are always so bizarre that they just kind of put them in their own little category and who knows what they do. There's one that I use regularly when I'm doing marking, but the other ones are always just kind of bizarre. And these ones only affect certain aspects like hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Hmm. Let's take a look at, well, let's take a look at darkened blending mode. Remember I said that a blending mode is basically a set of rules that defines how a layer will interact with the layers below. And in darkened blending mode, the rule is the pixels are visible only if they're capable of darkening the pixels below. So this black square here, well, black can darken pretty much anything, can't it? So there's the black, all right. The white square, well, white can't darken anything, can it? So we'll never see that white square. Now the 50% gray, it's only visible where it's capable of darkening the pixels below. So on this gray ramp, there's your 50% gray right there. Anything to the left is lighter, this can darken it. On the right side, well, we can't see it at all because it can't darken it. All right, what would you expect to see in, say, light and blending mode? What do you think? Well, pretty much just the opposite. All right, can't get rid of the white. The black will never show up because it can't lighten anything. And this is only visible where it's capable of lightening. Now, there's another blending mode called soft light. And that one's kind of an interesting set of rules. Soft light says that anything that is darker than 50% gray will darken the pixels below. It won't make it black, it'll just darken it down. Anything lighter than 50% gray will lighten the pixels below. And 50% gray itself will do absolutely nothing. Interesting. So the dodging and burning that I did on that other image, the exceptionally crappy dodging and burning, if I were to switch this to say, soft light, suddenly we've got some darkening where I painted black, we've got some lightening where I painted white, and maybe I was a, a little bit heavy handed on that, but if I were to drop my opacity a little bit, let's say I went say 20, maybe 30% opacity, and I decided I don't want people to focus on this area over here, I'll just paint a little bit of black onto that. Don't look at the pigeons down here, don't worry about these lights, bring up the opacity maybe and say don't worry about these buildings around here or this sky, 
but maybe I do want you to look down this alleyway here. Maybe kind of want to take a little walk up the street and see what's down there. Here's before and here's after. And this is totally non-destructive. If I turn this layer off, boing, nothing's actually happened. In fact, I could take this tool and I could lighten and darken and lighten and darken and darken. And I could do this literally all day. And at no point will I do any further damage to this image because ultimately I haven't actually done anything to any of these pixels. And that is the epitome of non-destructive imaging, making sure that nothing you do ever actually changes any pixels in the image. So give that a try. Pop into that folder called Dodge and Burn. Open up that image, Soft Light D&B, and tell a different story. Redirect your viewer's attention. So I'm gonna revert right back to the original version of this image, revert. So once you've opened it, you'll notice that you've got this bottom layer here active, that's kind of, kind of a lighter gray there. If you click the new layer icon, it'll make a new transparent layer. And as that stands, you're in this like, hey look, I can paint white on it, and it'll just show up white. But if you click on the name normal, in the top left of the layers panel. These are all your different adjustment layers. And if you switch it to soft light and then paint with white, something very different happens. I'm using a paintbrush. Um, oh, that's actually an interesting point. Did anybody try using the dodge and burn tools on that transparent layer? And did it work? It did not, did it? Um, the dodge and burn tools work by taking the RGB values, the numeric values from 0 to 255, and lowering them. And what numeric values do we have on layer 1? Well, it's a transparent layer. There's no pixels on there. There's nothing for the tools to latch onto and lighten or darken. Does that mean we can't use the dodge and burn tools at all with this technique? What did 50% gray do in soft light blending mode? It did absolutely nothing, did it? So if I were to take this and edit, fill, and then for contents, choose 50% gray, oh look, nothing happened. It's, it's doing absolutely nothing. But what if I took the burn tool? The burn tool now has some pixels that it can lock onto and darken down. So if you do want to use your dodge and burn tools, and a lot of photographers do, like anyone who comes from the days of the darkroom and they're like, I like my dodging and burning on my pictures. Um, and in the early days of Photoshop, this was really the only tool we had for lightening and darkening. We didn't have blending modes. We didn't have adjustment layers. We didn't have layer masks. Heck, from version three forward, like before that, we didn't even have layers. Um, so there are some people that really like their dodge and burn tools. So if you fill that layer with 50% gray, you can use your good old fashioned dodge and burn tools as well. Ah, he had another idea for non-destructive work. And that's a very good idea. Here's another thought, guys. Just pause what you're doing and, and let, let's take a look at the idea of using a curves or a levels. Let's say I wanted to do that vignetting, that darkening around the outside there. And I said, okay, well, let me, uh, let me throw on a curves layer here. Let me grab this middle line and pull it downwards. And you'll notice that it's affecting the entire image, which sucks. Except, wait a minute, what's this little white rectangle over here? It's a layer mask. So if I were to take a paintbrush and some black paint and just do a click right in the center, by painting black, I have hidden the darkening effects of that curve layer. And I could even go the opposite route. What if I quickly filled this layer mask with black? I could go edit, fill, and for contents, I could choose black. Or if I was feeling particularly lazy, I could go image adjustments invert. Or if I was feeling really lazy, I could just use the keyboard shortcut of command I switches that around. And then with some white paint, I could paint that darkening effect in where I want it to go. Looks kind of similar to that dodging and burning, doesn't it? With one difference. Well, okay, no, with a few differences. Um, one of the differences being, what if I want to lighten up the center? Can I do it with this curves layer? Uh, no, it only goes one way. So if I want to do some lightening in the center, I'd have to make another curves layer pull that upward, invert the layer mask, and with some white paint, I could do some lightening down there. So there are some differences. You need two layers if you want to do dodging and burning. 
Um, but one of the cool things about this that you can't do with the soft light dodging and burning is you can make changes to the intensity of it. Like maybe I thought, oh man, it's great, but it's a little bit too bright in the center there. I can double click and I can affect the entire layer. I can be even darker if I wanted, uh, just using this little slider here. For the dodge and burn on the um, soft light, I would have to go in with my paintbrush or dodge and burn tool. I prefer to use a paintbrush, fairly low opacity, and I can darken it back down by painting with black. And if I wanted to lighten it back up, hit X on the keyboard, which of course reverses your foreground and background, and I can paint with white. So actually, when you're doing the dodging and burning, do make sure that you have pure black and pure white as your foreground and background. And what's the keyboard shortcut to get pure black and pure white? To get your default colors? D. And if you need to reverse them, hit X. So give it a try. Tell a different story. Guide the viewer around the image. I mean, ideally, you get it perfect in the camera. But you've probably realized that doesn't always work out. You can do your composition. You can do your rule of thirds, all that kind of stuff. But sometimes a little bit of lightening, darkening, playing around with it can help. Actually, and speaking of adjustment layers, if you want to see something super cool, turn off the eyeball on that top black and white layer. It was actually a full color image you were working on. Another completely non-destructive technique. So the cool thing about these non-destructive techniques is it lets you make your files much more versatile. Like let's say, for example, you're doing this job for a client and they said, we're gonna run it in the you know, Toronto Star black and white travel section. So you're like, oh, black and white, no problem. Uh, when you process out the raw file, you process it out in black and white. You can do a nice little black and white adjustment in camera raw. And then you do all of your retouching on it. You, know, you clean up some of the little bits of debris in the street. Maybe you, you know, get rid of one of the pigeons. Maybe you're anti-pigeon or something. I don't know. And then the client's like, you know what? It was great that we ran it. It went so well. We want to run it in the color section. Would you be able to really easily whip up a color version of that? Not if you only had the black and white. If you processed it from camera raw as black and white, you, you'd have to reprocess it with color and then do all of that retouching again. Using these techniques, if they say, oh, it worked out really well, we want to run a color version, can you send us a color file? You're like, no problem, boink, there it is. You send it off, everybody's happy. Or you can make some changes to it. Let's say you were playing around with the contrast on it afterwards and you realize that, geez, it's a little bit too, uh, maybe the blue should be a little bit darker, like in the sky there. Well, we can grab these blues, we can darken them down, we can lighten them up. The nice thing about these adjustment layers is they're editable at any time. There's nothing permanent about them. So maybe you want the lights to be a little bit brighter. So there's a lot of options with these adjustment layers here. Oh, uh, just double click on that little square there and you can grab these little sliders and heft them around. Okay, sorry, which icon was that again? You see the black and white layer at the top? The layer itself, like not the layer mask, but the layer itself, just do a double click and it should call up your properties panel. And you can even, if you want, play around with, say, the opacity of the layer, maybe bring just a subtle hint of color back into it. Guys, be careful that you don't use too hard of a brush. Like if you use a really hard brush and you're doing some burning in there, you're gonna see some, well, pretty noticeable edges. A soft brush, however, will be fairly undetectable. So when you're happy with what you've got, save it up, last name, first name, layered PSD file. 